Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, sorry, didn't have my microphone hooked up. King and Lisa, first two people to appear. So I'm gonna paint a Weird drawing. It's just going to be a forest. I'm just going to draw trees. So I'm not too sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet. So I'm going to sort of experiment and play and see what we come up with. And so we're going to make it a winter scene. So this is the sky at the moment in the background. And then what we're going to have in front of that is snow and shadows in the snow. Just to sort of give it that. Turn. I like the shadows sometimes that you can create in snow. So what's going on here? Quit messing up my drawings. There you go. And as I'm throwing these things in here, the reason why I'm just throwing different colors in the background is because it's going to be behind trees. So the goal is just to create kind of a, a funny feeling in the background, just of of what you would see behind a whole pile of trees. Then I'm going to blend it all together just to mess it all up. We're going to have snowfall all over this, so that's part of what's going to happen is, is <coughs> excuse me, as I work my way through this, I'm going to create a great big feeling of snowfall and messiness. So this is going to be our background in behind our trees. Let's get a little bit more of that green back in here. And I want a little bit more of that pink in here. And some of that off color orange that we already have in there. A little bit of purple. Although purple is going to be the one that's going to show up. Some blue. Yeah, let's go back to the smudge in here. And let's go to seven hundred. Now this is not going to be something that you'll see a lot of because there's going to be so many trees in front of it, but it's just just to give it a different feel in the background, just to smudge it out a little bit. Let's see if we can pick up a different one here. Let's try this. No, but I want it to be 500. So that's just like these finger type things that okay and then we're going to take all of that and we're going to 
Put an arch art strokes over it. Yeah, screw it all up. Choose a color. Choose a color. <laughs> so, a bit just bear with me as I'm starting out. I'm just doing some more experimenting here, trying to figure out what exactly I want to do. It'll start to come to me as I get a little bit more of this done. But I kind of like some of the background stuff that's happening now. So I'm going to get in there and put in just a few little dots of stuff. But I don't want it to be that big. I want it to be like 250. 250, and let's put in... some different colors and again because this is in the background you're not going to see it too much so it'll it'll fade away and it won't even be part of the picture so much as we go through it okay let's throw another effect over top of it Another art stroke, uh, palette knife. Let's see what it does for me. I'm not gonna like it too much, I don't think, but we'll see. Oh, actually, I kind of do. So there's a nice background for me. And then we're gonna come in here again and just take this off because I want the snow to be white. And so there. Now we've got a background. Hey, Stephen. And we're going to start to draw our trees in there. Now, the trees are, are fairly simple to draw because <clears throat> what you do is you get your big size, which is about 250 there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up and I'm going to choose the different colored trees that I want. And each one of them will be done in, in a different style. And we'll come fairly close. So the first one, I'm going to do a very bizarre um, color. I'm going to work with this, and this is too big, too thick, so let's go 150 maybe. Yeah, so then this is the first tree that I have coming down into the snow. And then the second one I'm going to make a little darker. So just see the range of uh, colors that I have up here along the sides? And that's all I'm doing is working with the the different ranges of trees, colors, and it's all part of the way this hopefully is going to work out. Let's go a really light off-colored blue for this one. In here. Now these are all going to be birch trees, which you may not see yet, but it will come to you. In a dream, late at night, you'll see the colors. Now, in behind these, we're going to have a whole pile of other trees. I'm going to go a little bit thinner here now. Let's go down to 100. Can't have all your trees the exact same size. That just don't make no sense at all.
Now we're going to go up into the grays because in the background you'll have some of these softer color grays that you may not see so much when we get all the other ones on there, but they're still there. So here's one that we're just going to cut across here. It's not all trees are straight up and down, right? This. Okay. And then to make it interesting, uh, these are 150s, right? So let's go 150s. That's going to be these ones. And everything else is 100s, right? 100s. Does anybody see any trees yet? Look like trees to you? <clears throat> Me either, but we'll see. <laughs> you want to go 50s? One, 50, no, 50s, just straight 50s. 50s? And if you remember, always start off very fuzzy <clears throat> and not very not very solid and you can see why I wasn't very concerned about the background because as these trees start to come together <laughs> you'll start to see some of the stuff so now the question is we go to a smudge now we're going to start to smudge our trees. Now, the smudging of the trees is fairly simple because all you want to do is you want to take some of the colors and you want to pull them out so you start to have a tree. So you see how simple that is? It's just a pull and we're starting to get a little bit of an interesting tree coming off of this guy. So the branches are fairly easy to pull because you're just pulling the different colors. Out of each one of the trees. And filling in the area with some different branches. And there's always tons of branches. Anybody remember the name of that guy who used to paint? And he, he used to uh, have a big afro. So I was reading somewhere that he was uh, he was in the military for the longest time, and so he did the. I was never in the military, but he did painting for the same reason that I do painting is because it just calms me down and it's the way I like to end my day or if there's something stressful going on in my life then I do this and it just allows me to not think about anything and just draw and paint I can't remember what that guy's name was and you know who else who's the guy who had Finnegan as a dog he was a good painter too because he used to draw all the time on his show, Mr. Dress Up. I should get myself a cool name like that. Except I don't dress up, so that wouldn't work. So you can see how you're starting to get the idea of how you have all these trees and branches going out all over the place 
and I'm going to go down to a little bit of a thinner one. So let's go 40, because you can't have all your branches exactly the same width. Although when you do pull and you start to release, it does get thinner, and so you're going to make all of this down here at the bottom up look like. closer you get to the bottom, the denser the bushes become, and the more branches you see. So this is not something that you would run through, obviously. This is the birch bark trees, with all the different colors. And this orange guy doesn't have any branches yet. Mr. Jason Miller, how you doing? Always nice to see the different names pop up from my past and from people that I have on Facebook that I never get a chance to see anymore but still keep track of by lurking on Facebook and just following what's going on in their lives and so Facebook has saved me a lot of times when I'm run across an ex-student or something like that that I would never ever remember their name but because they were one of my Facebook people then I recognize them based on the Facebook and based on the stuff that they've posted and what's going on in their lives, which is always cool. It's always nice to see ex-students and how their lives are going, great things that they're doing. And their families, as I get older and I run into their kids, in my academy, in my volleyball academy, run into some of these people that I coach. Their kids are starting to show up in my academy, which makes me just feel old. So we don't want to really want to talk about that a lot. But that's kind of nice. Because like my mom did for me, she said, I hope you have a child just like you were, which I think worked out. I have a son that's very much like me, and I think that's a mother's curse, but I shouldn't complain because my child's actually a pretty nice kid. But I think that's part of the witchcraft, mother's witchcraft, she put a curse on me. Okay, let's see if I can just wash this out a little bit. I wanted to do just a real fast drawing, so this one's not going to take a long time to complete. But I will start um, adding just a little bit of a different touch on the side of some of these. Again, this is just a process to draw the trees a little bit more. So I'm just sort of going to draw some of this stuff down so it's not just 
the orange so much as some of the other colors. And I'll make these trees look a little bit rounder simply by adding some of this texture as we go through here. And you really can't mess this up because you can pull the, the, the stuff through it again. And so as you add some of this yellow, which just brightens up some of the trees, you'll go back and fix it afterwards. But for now, I'm just going to pull this stuff down just to give it a different feel. And then you have to create these as a little bit more rounded. And so in order to create the rounded feeling, you got to go down to 10, nope, probably around 40. 40. And then you sort of just pull this stuff. I don't see that's too big. You need to go down to about 25. So again, this is this again becomes a layering type thing where you just sort of draw the layers and you're just trying to create a little bit more feeling in some of the trees, so they you get a feeling that they they're not just these sticks going up and down. You got to put a little bit. Of, roundness to them so that little arc that you put across it doesn't have to be totally accurate it's just a matter of pulling the, the lines across it so you get that birch bark feeling on the trees and then what you do is once you get that general idea going of the trees then you're going to go back in and work on the branches again and the branches you're just going to pull out across them again and again it's just the idea of trying to fix some of the nice solidness that they have going on there simply by pulling it across a little bit You're just trying to make a cluttered tree and something interesting to look at. So you're not trying to create exactly the the beautiful forest that you uh, would spend a lot of time drawing your trees and your owls and animals running through it and foliage and all that other stuff. This is just a fast winter scene that we're going to cover with snowflakes and try and get a little bit of a feeling to the drawing. So this in the front is kind of interesting. It's a little bit strong. And it's got something to do with the colors more than anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to about 250. And then I'm going to pull some of this down to, again, see if we can get the shadows in again the way I want them. So I, I pulled them all over the place to mess it up. And then now I'm just going to pull it again down to take away some of the power of some of this stuff. Just so it, you get the idea that it's a, the snow being reflected, the shadows. Okay, now that we've got that, we go back up here to about a 75, and now we're going to work on some of the smaller branches. So you're going to zoom back in here into this lower level. And get 75, that's a 75. That's not a 75. Yeah, that is a 75. That's way too big. Let's go to a 35. So the idea here, hmm, that's even too big. I want a 25. 24 then. 25 would have been too big. 24 is perfect. So this again, this is just light. Like see how it's now making some of these nice little 
fine little strokes. So that's a goal of this now is down here on the bottom, you want to have some of the white showing through, but you also want to have some of this, these different colors coming out. So as you pull the brown across it, it'll give you that, that depth and the layers. So again, it's just a whole pile of layers being pulled across the page. And you're going to put a, a whole series of different flashes, color flashes in here to emphasize the, as people say, your magic forest. I really like your magic forests. That's because I don't want to take the time to draw the leaves. So you can see why I didn't spend a whole pile of time on the background. Yeah, let's zoom out and see how we look. See how we're doing. Kind of cool. Starting to get the, the eels of the trees on a morning afternoon. Eels of the trees. And as these, uh, you put so many branches in here that you start to lose where some things start and others begin. But that's okay. So right away I'm going to start to put in some camera photo lenses. So we're going to keep these small. The brightness is going to be way down on them. And so you're going to have these little flashes in the woods which will give you a real cool little feeling. So that's still too bright. So I'm going to take it down a little lower still. Okay. So there's one. So let's put another one on there and pick a different color. It's a camera lens flare. Let's put it right there. Okay, I'm going to put probably four of these in here, just because we like the way they add a little mysterious touch in here. This one's going to go right up here. And I'm going to make it a little bit of a different, let's see what I'm going to do with the fallout here. Make it a little brighter. You can see how you start to get some of the the feeling of the reflection off the snow and that kind of stuff starts to show up. This one I'm going to put it into a blue. I want this one. Get over here. I want this one to go right there. that worked out fairly well then we want to go down here to creative and go particles what is it snow and bubbles now don't want that mess we want to go to weather texture no nope. creative weather yes please snowfall flurries size them Bigger, bigger still. Oh, too many. Let's 
some snowfall through there. And then we need one big spot where the sun's coming through. So this one here is going to be camera. camera again lens flare and we need a big lens flare this is going to be a little bit more powerful this one so we're going to put it right here because I think that's where most of our light is and we want to go to the yellow again yellow yep and then I want to strengthen the brightness of that With that and I was blown I was just uh, messing everything up with it so I'm just gonna stop I wasn't doing any good so let's go back here and go with plastic what do we got a forest then I'm gonna make it snow again fact texture creative weather snow that let's do it one more time creative scatter no cancel that thanks creative weather that was with the fog nah, I don't like that too much so let's go plastic again, texture, plastic one more time, it's too dark. 
Oh, cancel. I liked it on that one. So, there we go. We got a real fast little drawing. It's only taken me uh, 36 minutes. So let's zoom in here and see what you got. So you can see all the different, uh, the forest, the edge of the forest. And like always, you have to sign it. When you sign it, you go down here and you put yourself a little J, little Hancock on there. John Hancock. Kind of a cool little texture if you go into it. Let's undo that, undo that. Undo that. Let's try and do the, the brush without shaking so much. Let's see if you can do it, Dan. There you go, people. Hope you had fun watching. I'll zoom back out one more time so you get a chance to see it just at the finish stage. There you got her. Hope you liked it. Ciao.